This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Sit back and relax. It's time to take a wild trip to the past. Get ready for another exciting episode of Memory Lane. On today's episode of Memory Lane, we're going to be checking out a Nintendo Power Magazine from July 1998, Volume 110. And this right here is a special WWF Warzone cover with Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Undertaker. And, uh, it looks pretty damn cool. And you can see that this is July 98 down here. And the expiration is July 99, so this is probably the first magazine from uh, a resubscription. Let's see if you zoom in on that. So more than likely he, uh, the person that originally had this magazine resubscribed to Nintendo Power and this is the first batch that came, this first magazine that came from that batch. And he has a whole nother year to go before his subscription expires. So we're going to be checking this out. Pretty cool. Alright, let's get into the page. First of all, the front cover is pretty awesome. I'm a fan of wrestling. So that is actually pretty cool. Alright, let's go inside this magazine here for a second. Let's put this over here. Okay, we're gonna just take a look at this. Let's see if we can bring the camera as closely as possible without damaging the magazine. And here we go. We have a. Uh, usually, right in the front of the magazine, you have a subscription card just in case you run out. You can fill this out and mail it back to um, Nintendo Power where you just give them a call. And here we have your table of contents. And this is showing off various different games such as Banjo Kazooie Part 2, Mission Impossible, and of course WWF Warzone. And it's pretty cool that they have a picture of Owen Hart. As, as you already know, Owen Hart. Uh, this came out when? Let me see here. This came out in July of 98. So less than a year later, Owen Hart died from an accident. I think it was here March or May of uh, 99, I don't quite remember when, but he, he died from an, from an actual accident on a live pay-per-view when he was trying to lower himself from uh, the arena. Yeah, it was in Kansas City, it was the Kemper Arena. And he was playing the gimmick of the Blue Blazer, and the entrance was that he would be lowered down from the ceiling. And something went wrong, and the uh, the cable broke. Uh, there's actually uh, a Dark Side of the Ring episode documentary about that, which uh, discusses a whole ki all kinds of stuff concerning that. Like the harness was, there was definitely something that was not right that caused that to happen. Like the actual um, release mechanism wasn't designed for his weight. All kinds of crazy stuff. And it's a shame that he died because he was a great wrestler. Alright, so we have the July 1998 up here, volume 110, and you get the table constants. And also, Warzone, I remember going to Funkland back in the day, and they had Warzone on, on display over a behind the counter on a, like a 13 inch TV on the N64, and I remember that vividly, and I was, I was my mind was blown by how good it looked. All right, let's take a look at these uh, these drawings right here. 
We have a Pokemon fan art. That looks pretty cool. We have a, uh, what is this? Is that a Yoshi 007 fan art? This, this person pretty much invented ROM hacking. <laughs> Look at that. Good job. Oh, that is awesome. A Rampage World Tour uh, fan art right there. That is pretty cool. Good job to that person. Usually the fan art, you always see like this Nintendo stuff, but occasionally you come across some crazy like random stuff like that. You have Zelda. Right there, and then what do we have here? We have uh, that one right there. I don't know exactly what that is. And then we have uh, Mario playing the Game Boy camera, printing out a whole bunch of pictures. All right, let's zoom in. And there's probably more fan art on the other side. Let's see. And here we go, we have our uh, power chart. And of course, number one is GoldenEye. I think <laughs> uh, 007 GoldenEye stayed number one for like years. We have Diddy Kong Racing, Yoshi Story. And that is your top 10 of this right there. Let's zoom in so you guys can see it. And then over here we have your top 10 Super Nintendo games. And a uh, link to the past, Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Part 3. Those all appear to be like the games that were stuck at the top of the list. Like forever, as soon as they came out, they were like number one. And here we have your top five Game Boy games right here, look at that. And then if we have our top 10 desired list, the most wanted list. And uh, yeah, the Nintendo disc drive was always at the top of the list. As well as the Zelda game and the Game Boy cameras up there too, look at that. And there is another illustration right there. And you, you can tell that this is from the generation of like the 80s and 90s where all your video video game characters and action stars were like huge, like juiced up. Look at that. All right, let's uh, turn the page. We also have a Quest 64 drawn right there. We're not gonna skip that one. We're gonna zoom in and look at it real quick. That actually looks pretty nice. I almost skipped it. All right. All right, let's turn the page right here. And this is volume 110. And here we have WWF Warzone. A game that blew my mind when I first saw it. I saw it on an actual N64 in Funko Land like many years ago. And yeah, look at that. Got some cool screenshots. You got Stone Cold Steve Austin right here. Some pretty cool stuff. Now, this game really did look really, really good when it first came out. Originally, it was known as WWF 98. That was the original name for this game. But then they switched it to Warzone. You have Shawn Michaels on the bottom for you know, all you Shawn Michaels fans. If you want to Look at Shawn Michaels, there he is, and then of course, the man, the legend himself. No, we're not talking about Stone Cold, we're talking about Gold Dust. There he is, he's up there on top, let's focus the camera. There he is, Gold Dust, and we have British Bulldog over here actually. Another great legend. We need more Brett the Hitman Hart. We got Bret Hart right here, Owen Hart, Farouk. Alright, who's on the next page? Alright, we got a whole listing of all the different wrestlers on this page. Undertaker, Ken Shamrock. So if you're a wrestling fan, you'll definitely like this. 
You have Kane over here on the bottom. That looks pretty cool. And then we have Banjo Kazooie. Look at that. So, all of you Banjo Kazooie fans, check this out. Got different screenshots and stuff. Tons of Banjo Kazooie content. I'm going to turn the page carefully. Pretty cool stuff. So there's several pages of Banjo-Kazooie. They're definitely pushing this game. And they really didn't have to push the game that much because the game was had a quite a good reputation. Here we have F0X. Some really, really cool illustrations right here, by the way. Look at that. Those are really, really good illustrations. And this game was incredibly fast. Like most F Zero games were really, really fast. And we have Mortal Kombat 4. Another really cool game. And this one has blood, so they're not cheaping out on the blood in this one. You can see there's some blood up here, some blood over there. Let's zoom in on the blood. Just about every screenshot has blood in it. Look at that. I'm trying to make you know that they're not censoring the game. And if they did censor it, I have no idea what they did, but there is apparently tons of blood. Tons and tons of blood. We got Liu Kang right there on the bottom. That's my favorite character to be in any Mortal Kombat game. I choose Liu Kang and there is a new Mortal Kombat game coming out. Well, no, by the time this video comes out, it's going to be already out. And then we have the classified information with the cheat codes. And what do we have here? Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. You guys want that? Write it down. I used to write down cheat codes back then. I used to run to the library, use the internet on the, on the library computers, and write down the cheat codes, run home, and that's it. I used to use the cheat codes. We have 1080 degree snowboarding. How, how exactly did you guys get your cheat codes back then? For me, I didn't really have a computer right away, so I, I would use uh, I would use uh, the public library back in the 90s. I would run over there. And uh, they also had Nintendo Power magazines in my library as well. I lived over in Connecticut back then. And it, it was not like a rich place or anything like that. It was actually uh, a pretty rough city to live in. It was over near Waterbury. It was, it was in Meriden, so it was a little bit above New Haven. And uh, that place was a rough place to live. We got Quake right here. So a lot of people that live from that area knows exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, back then, uh, a lot of people that had video game systems, if you didn't have internet, you just go to the library, use the internet for a little bit, print out your cheat codes or write, write them down, whichever. I think back then it actually costed money to print stuff out too. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like five cents or ten cents. And here we go. We got 007 Golden Eye cheat codes, Olympic hockey, uh, clay fighter. Let's zoom in and so let's see what it says. Yeah, my library had tons and tons of like older Nintendo Power magazines. Dating back to like the uh, early SNES days and the NES days. And it was actually really good for me because I actually had the, uh, the NES console all the way up until 98. So I would go there 
and I would read the magazines, I would write down the tips or uh, whatever the heck the case may be, write down the cheat code, and then I would go home and try it out, and if it worked, it worked. And I played my NES for the longest time, like up until I got a PlayStation of Christmas of 98, so almost 99. And we got Chopper Attack. And this almost looks like a like a Desert Strike type deal. Oh, I don't think I ever played this. I know I don't own the games. I'm actually looking at my N64 games right now. I don't see it up there. It looks pretty cool though. Have you ever played Chopper Attack? Comment down below and uh, let me know what this is all about. So I never actually played this. It looks actually interesting. And then we have Harvest Moon on the Game Boy. And you see, like this up here, I'm going to show you. Back to uh, re referencing the older uh, Nintendo Power magazines, you would you would see like map layouts like that, where you would see everything laid out on one huge map. All right, let's. Focus this camera right here. And we have a poster. Alright, what kind of poster do we have here? Let's find out. And what poster do we have? We have a Buck Bumble poster. That was very, very random and un unexpected. Alright, this is the uh, Buck Bumble Special Edition Nintendo Power Magazine. We got the uh, poster. Completely did not expect that. I didn't really think that this game was that big of a deal that it deserved a poster. That was really random. Alright, let's focus this camera. That was completely unexpected. And that's one thing I like about Nintendo Power Magazine is you never know what kind of poster you're going to get. It could be anything. Alright, we have Impossible Mission right here. Or Mission Impossible. Not in, uh, Impossible Mission is actually a good game. So I don't want to stain the name of that game. This game is probably not that good. As you can see here, it's, it's kind of like a double seven type thing, but it's in third person view. And the game is probably, I'm going to be honest, it's, I think I have this game. I don't think it's that good. In fact, I do have it. It's right here. It's right out in the open. Look at this. And I never really had fun playing that game. Now the, uh, the Die Hard games on the uh, Sega Saturn, or Dynamite Deca, whatever you want to call it, those games were really, really good. But these games on the other hand, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you, what do you guys think about Mission Impossible? Do you think it's good or bad? For me personally, I don't really care about the game. Alright, we have uh, Mike Piazza's Strike Zone. This is actually a baseball game I actually never heard of. Is that an actual game or is this like something else? Uh, what is this? I don't know. Alright, let's uh... Now this is an actual game. What the hell? That's weird. Uh, little things like this, like the illustrations of the, of the uh, baseball field. Look at that. That's actually cool. Okay, let's zoom it out here. And of course, uh, you, you can't be doing that anymore. All that hand touching. Not, not in uh, 2020 anyways. This is, this is filmed in 2020, so... You know exactly what's going on. It's quite, 
that's 64. It's one game I actually never really played, but it looks like some sort of RPG. You got all the maps layouts right here, which is pretty cool. It's one thing that's great about Nintendo Power magazines, it gives you like a little mini strategy guide. Ooh, it feels pretty thick right here. Look at this. Some more pages. More Quest 64 stuff right here. We have Quake 64. We got Turok Dinosaur Hunter, and we have uh, Final Fantasy Legends 2 right there. And this game, the Turok game actually looks really good on the screenshots. I mean, look at that. That looks pretty awesome. I would definitely want to play that game. I grew up playing, like, when I was younger, the NES and the MS-DOS PC. So for me, it was either NES games, or it was playing, like, Wolfenstein or Doom or something like that, or Duke Nukem. And speaking of the NES... Alright, look at this. Got the 10-year anniversary. We, we have some uh, NES stuff right here. That's the first issue right there. If you actually do own... It, the first issue of Nintendo Power, it goes for a lot of money. And there's the NES console right there. Look at that thing. We got the Zapper right there. What else do we have? Looks like a Metroid, Mario 3. That is cool. We got Yoshi right there. It looks like some NES screenshots. It's like 10 years of Nintendo Power. What is this? Looking back. So I guess these were games that were covered in the Nintendo Power magazines from back then. You know, based on the year. You can see the years right here. You got a lot of stuff. Alright, that was pretty cool. I'm thinking that probably on the next page we're going to be seeing more. Oh no, this is the contest. There's always really crazy random contests here. This is when 10 hit games. 10 winners, 10 hit games each. And what games are we speaking of? Let's find out. Does it actually say? It says, uh, choose 10 games from the covers of Antenna Power magazine. Okay, so whichever games appeared on the covers, you can actually pick those games out. That's the grand prize, you get 10 of those. That's actually pretty cool. Second prize. Choose the one game from the covers of the Nintendo Power magazines, you get one game, and then the third prize, you get a uh, cool Nintendo Power magazine t-shirt. That's actually pretty cool. Alright, let's go to the next feature here, we got Bust a Move. This game's been around forever, and it's quite the popular, like, little bubble puzzle game. Tons of bust and move coverage right here. We got All-Star Baseball 99 for the, uh, the Game Boy, which... It's not much to see, it's grayscale and... Crazy looking stuff right here, you got... Look at this! A crazy looking graph. Like, I don't know how exactly this is supposed to help you play the game, but it tells you what a fastball is. A split finger, a change up, knuckle, and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. But I don't think that's going to help you too much. I 
And we got the uh, rosters right here. I was actually just speaking to a friend, uh, was it yesterday? He mentioned it like back in the 90s, uh, this kid and his father sued, I think Nintendo, because they had a baseball game that was licensed, but it didn't feature all the names of the, uh, the players. But they tried to sue anyways, I, think, I don't think it actually went anywhere. We got the arena. This is the uh, challenges for today's episode. Those are the three challenges right there. Alright, let's see here. I don't know what the hell this is. What is this? Beat Generation Game Boy Camera DJ Mode. Techno Music. Prodigy. So I'm guessing you can actually uh, create your own tempos and stuff like beats. That is interesting. Here, here's the scores right here. We have Mission Impossible got 7.2. I guess it was an okay game. I never really had fun playing it. Chopper Attack got a 6.6. .6, which that sucks. That's not good. Mortal Kombat 4 got a 7.4. I would expect it to be a little bit higher. Uh, Quest 64, 6.3. That's not good. Uh, this Mike Piazza's Strike Zone baseball game got a 5.4. That's pretty bad. What the hell? Bust the Move 2 got a 6.5. How do you get Bust the Move 6.5? Come on. It's a freaking puzzle game. Alright, what is uh, N64 the next generation? So it looks like we have some screenshots right here. It looks like some E3 screenshots. Rogue Squadron for the N64. Of course, right away, if you see that back then when you saw that, that's like, wow, that looks pretty awesome. You have Conquerors. I'm pretty sure this is Conquerors Bad Fur Day, but they, they're calling it 12 Tales Conquer 64. And then you got Jet Force Gemini. And uh, Perfect Dark, which all these games were the later generation N64 games, the ones that were notorious for pushing in the N64 to its limits. And you see here that Zelda rules. E3, 1998. This is going to be interesting for all you Zelda fans. Quarterback Club 99 right there. And of course we have some Zelda stuff right here. Now look at that Zelda model. That That's Link. But look at the model right there. That was pretty different than uh, the actual game. And a whole bunch of other stuff right here. Some of these uh, screenshots might be beta screenshots. So you never know. What is that? Castlevania. It looks like a first person first person Castlevania. Oh yeah, yeah look, we have a Pokemon right there. Oh yeah, this is uh around the time that E3 has their press conferences and stuff. Now, what else do we have here?
We have Eidos, best known for Warcraft. And they're showing off Fighting Force on the N64. I mean, that, that would have been cool if they had Tomb Raider on the N64. That would have been awesome. Tomb Raider 64, can you imagine that? And down here we have some Turok 2 screenshots from E3, which looks actually really good. I don't know what this is. What is this? ODT? I'm not familiar with that game. And over here we have a NASCAR game, which looks actually really good for back then. Maybe let's lock this camera in place. And we get the sneak peeks over here. We have uh, StarCraft. And they're showing a, a screenshot of the PC version, which is pretty funny. Look at that. It even says it. PC version. And you have Win Back, which I do remember that game, but I don't think it's really that good. Uh, here year 2000. What is that? Shadowgate 64. And of course, you have your forecast of various different things that are being released. And this is coming up in the next issue. We have Bomberman Heroes. We got. F1 World Grand Prix, a uh, golf game, a Turok 2 Seas of Evil, which is going to be awesome. And uh, you have a whole bunch of different Yoshi random merchandise over here. Completely random. I mean, look at that. So if you want your Yoshi merchandise, uh, mail, 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 where, where's the mailing number here? We have to call that number right here. Call that number. And get all your Yoshi merchandise. There's a ton of Yoshi merchandise right here. In the back of the magazine, what do we have here? We got the Game Boy camera, which I actually showed off on the last one of the episodes. I showed off the Game Boy camera. I think it was last month. So Game Boy camera. That's exactly how it looks. That's how it looks on the, like the best, like, eh, more than likely you're not going to get a picture that looks that good, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I have two Game Boy cameras and they don't look that good. Alright, let's uh, see if we can zoom in right here, and we'll zoom in right there, and let's show off the front cover again, let's see if we can... And there we have it, we have... WWF Warzone on the front cover, pretty cool stuff. That is the Nintendo Mar Power Magazine of July 1998, issue volume 110. If you enjoyed this episode of, Mag uh, of Memory Lane, I was going to say magazine, I don't know why. But if you want to see more classic magazines on Memory Lane, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you think.